see just how it's going to work out as Guillermo is going to lean into that Pokemon to start off this game one of this Masters top four match between James and Guillermo. And you see that Kyogre on the field as well. And while we have the Kyogre and the Grout on the field, you get to see that speed interaction where the Kyogre is faster. So we will see the rain set first and then Groudon gets to follow that up by taking it away and setting the sun. But the Psychic Surge is also on the field, which allows Ndidi to get this special defense boost getting rid of the rain is really really big because the Kyogre ha is kind of forced into what move it wants to go for if it wants control of the rain immediately then the option is of course to Dynamax and then Max Geyser but looking at James's team uh, you know that does feel like a very good candidate for the Dynamax and the Max Geyser uh, you know only get helps you out next turn damage wise well the other thing about this board position is that you have the Regieleki on the other side which is m usually a special attacker and so knowing that the Ndidi has that special defense boost from the Psychic Seed you can just follow me away any of that super effective damage. The one thing that I do like about this pair of Groudon and Regieleki, though, is they both have access to spread moves. So if your opponent is trying to mess around with follow me, you can completely ignore that by hitting it and its partner. The only problem with that, though, is the Regieleki spread move usually comes in the form of an Electro Web, which is somewhat lacking when it comes to damage. It's also a form of speed control, though, and that is relatively nice, potentially putting the Kyogre below the Groudon in speed after landing an Electro Web and Regieleki will be going first. It's that fast, it's that powerful, and it really can cause problems. Yeah, but look at this. We saw the Kyogre Dynamax on James's side, and seeing a Dynamax getting followed up on Guillermo's, it is the Groudon. And so now we've got these giant restricted Pokemon that are about to battle it out here. It feels like a tale of old from Ruby and Sapphire, but we also need to see what this Regieleki is up to. Despite the fact that Ndidi is in front of two Pokemon that can use those spread attacks it will be using the follow me but there is the electro web but the groudon can't use spread attacks anymore as it's done it's a critical hit though uh, oh, that is a lot of damage from that electro web it isn't knockout worthy but it's so so close and indeed he's speed falling uh, isn't the big relevant one here kyogre getting dropped down to be slower than the groudon of course indeed he's going to take this max quake but now the kyogre is slower that means that you know james is going to be attacking not only in the sun but into a special defense boost as well so this is probably going to be one of the most underwhelming Max Geysers you have ever seen. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. I mean, the Electro Web can be so Ooh. devastating here, but it's actually going to be Max Hailstorm going into the Regieleki, and that is not going to be enough to get the knockout right now. But you did reset the weather so that you take away the sun, you set up the hail, you get some of that hail chip going, but that Regieleki is not going to take enough. That Regieleki only has one more turn as well. It did reveal the life orb in that uh, attack. And, you know, maybe uh, James thinking, okay, well, if I go into the Regieleki uh, with the Max Hailstorm, I'll be able to knock it out through a potential Focus Sash as well. The big thing there, though, is because of the special defense boost it gets from that Max Quake, it's able to hang on quite comfortably. The Regieleki in a very decent position uh, until the Rillaboom turns up. Yes, the Regieleki is very, very fast, but guess what? The Regieleki is also able uh, to get knocked out by the Grassy Glide. Yeah, that is definitely a good point. I mean, Rillaboom, either way, should have a chance to be able to take out that Regieleki. Because I was certainly worried about the fact that maybe you have an Electro Web on top of that. Groudon is still faster than the Kyogre, though, so it still mm -hmm. gets a chance to attack before Kyogre does, which is why we see it go for a more defensive approach with that Max Guard. But look at that. It was Rising Voltage. So where is... This Rilla, what is this Rillaboom doing? Well, the Rillaboom is sticking around and actually going for a U-turn. So getting right out, getting a little bit of damage down there and obviously trying to reposition the board. This will show us James's final Pokemon and kind of give Guillermo good information on what he may have to do to win this game. It's almost like a turn of wasting time, letting the hail deal with that Regieleki as, of course, Groudon just causes some problems. But with the Regieleki being caught out by the hail... The, oh, the, oh, no, it's a one hell. <laughs> Oh my goodness, my maths wasn't quick enough there. Uh, and Regieleki now getting recovery, so it's not even going to get knocked out by the hail next turn. No, I mean, that's the, the problem with the way that I think the end of turn resolution works for the chip and also the grassy terrain right now is that Regieleki is going to be able to stick mm. around. It, it's back up to where it was before it took the hail chip. It gets knocked out as soon as it attacks. That's the big concern. If it attacks, then the hail chip will come through and, and cause that problem. But, you know, this Kyogre taking that really, really nicely is huge. And honestly, pivoting out into the Zashian in front of uh, a 
a Groudon is certainly a big concern. This Kyogre is scared, rightfully so, of this Regieleki. And I'm just wondering, uh, you know, what is the Regieleki going to do? Is there a way uh, that maybe this Regieleki could call it and start to cause some really big problems? Well, it's going to protect. Knowing that it can stick around and you're also not taking a Dynamax move from Sashian as well, just going for the protect. Not wanting to take too much damage from this either if the Groudon is going to be targeting that down. So, smart protect here from James. Really defensive switches coming through, even just giving up that third turn of Dynamax of the Kyogre in Rillaboom's stead. Yeah, but the, the special defense boost is definitely going to help out this Groudon a little bit. The big concern and what I think James is looking forward to in this game is finding that position to bring Kyogre in with no speed drop, set up by the Regieleki, and then of course, you know, being able to just attack the Groudon first. And if you've got the rain up, even special defense boosts are going to make this a bit of a slog to, to try and knock it out. The Rillaboom comes back in, a very safe switch in, in the face of a potential Max Quake, or even, you know, a, a lightning, a rising voltage, uh, something like that. Even an Electro Web wouldn't do much, would just control the speed, so... Dynamax done with for both of these trainers, but most importantly, I think Guillermo, you know, really trying to force James around the board, put him where he wants him, you know, with some really, really good, uh, you know, positioning, switching, and now he's, he's starting to think ahead. He's got the most out of his Dynamax turns. He's given up those special defense boosts, though, and just being able to pivot around really big here. Incineroar makes so much sense. Incineroar, intimidate into your two physical attackers. That feels fantastic. Well, here's the cleanup, though. It, really, it could have been maybe getting a chance to do some super effective damage onto that Groudon, but then Cinero did switch in. We will see some damage onto the Zashian, but with the Life Orb recoil, that Regieleki will be removed from the field. But the Sacred Sword as well, really nice to be able to get that into the Incineroar, but because of that Intimidate drop, it will not be enough to get the knockout. And keeping the Incineroar around for another turn is pretty big here. Uh, being able to hold onto it for a fake out, potentially a parting shot to get away, is absolutely massive. Uh, the big thing here is this Rillaboom just seems to be, you know, causing some problems. Um, you know, just trying to get those bits of damage down. And I think that's, you know, definitely where James needs to find a little more wiggle room. The Lunala showing off, so Guillermo very much concerned about this end game Groudon in after the Kyogre situation. And the quickest way to do that, just looking at their health percentages, would be to knock out the Zashin. You really need to make sure that you remove that from the field. But we're going to see James also preserve that Rillaboom. That grassy terrain was set quite a while ago, so you are looking at being able to maybe preserve that Rillaboom to reset that. But Kyogre as well. You get the Kyogre in. You're not super threatened down by anything that is on the other side of the field. And you also kind of force Guillermo into this position where maybe you have to bring in that Groudon if you feel like that Kyogre is threatening you. But a huge protect here, and that's going to be a really really big turn to get this Kyogre in for free. Yeah, getting the Kyogre in for, uh, you know, no charge is big. The Lunala here, though, does have something to consider. Um, many of the Lunala that we, we look at, um, you know, they're the, the big focal point of the team. And, and I'm just wondering, you know, what can Guillermo's Lunala do to make a really big difference in this game? Uh, you know, the Kyogre and Zashin are big damage dealers, but the big thing is there's still a Shadow Shield up, and that's going to help out a huge amount. Of course, you know, there's options like Kyogre, could throw out a massive uh, Origin Pulse, it would have to be, because Water Spout not looking so good. But I think, looking through James's moves in previous games, that might not be an option for him. He might be down to single target attacks. And that doesn't feel super good either, but at least you might be able to guarantee yourself some damage when... You do look at the rain being up and also, of course, what other types of attacks that Kyogre tends to carry. But Incineroar, going to be going back into its Pokeball. Groudon now hitting the fields to reset the weather. Get control of the weather with the drought. Set the sun up, and it does mean that if it's a water-type attack coming out of this Kyogre, it is, of course, going to be reduced damage even on the Lunala. The Zacian setting up the substitute. We've seen how impactful these substitutes can be on these Zacians. It was a key component of James's top eight match, and it managed to save him and buy him a whole lot of time. But it's not going to be allowed to stay on the field for much longer, as it is immediately faded away with the Moon Guys Beam connecting into that slot. Kyogre, though, does go for the Ice Beam in the sun, catching the Groudon on the way in. That is a lot of damage that honestly that Groudon got way more than it bargained for trying to switch in there yeah I mean you're definitely looking at that Incineroar to really help shore up the end game when you look at maybe if the Zashian holds on or the Rillaboom that's going to be in the back but this Lunala is still sitting very healthy and based on how these speeds have interacted 
if Zashin gets taken out, Lunala is all of a sudden the fastest thing on the field. That's it, yeah. The, if Lunala can get there, then it's going to be in a, a great position. And Lunala being left alone does mean Shadow Shield is going to buy it a whole lot of time. But such a good job there, I think, by James to call a potential switch in and just cover it nicely with the Ice Beam. Don't fall for this play where you're trying to attack in the drought. Just make sure that you're doing the most amount of damage. Looks like we're just going all out with no protects this turn. Let's see how much it can do. As yeah, That's going to be the Behemoth Blade into the Shadow Shield side. Uh, but Lunala, yeah, gets to go before this Kyogre, uh, a Meteor Beam helping out for a very nicely tidied up end game where you are looking at doing huge damage with your special attack boost. Well, I'm gonna have to see if that Meteor Beam actually connects though. It's so. going for it and it does get to go. There's the animation started off. You know it's heading towards that Kyogre too and that's an easy knockout. So Guillermo feeling pretty good and this Groudon hasn't even moved yet. Nope. Precipice Blades now to fire out, but Zacian does avoid the attack. So Zacian still has that speed advantage over the Lunala. You just broke the Shadow Shield. That Rillaboom is going to come in as well. But yeah, you're still looking at this really interesting endgame where James preserved that Rillaboom for long enough to be able to reset the grassy terrain once it expired. There's a really tricky situation here though for James because that Incineroar is still available for Guillermo and he needs to find the right time to bring that in, get this Intimidate down. Don't forget this Zashin came in already, got the Intrepid Sword boost, then got Intimidated. Of course the Incineroar left after that fact and then after that turn, you know, managed to come back out. Rillaboom though is going for the Grassy Glide, it's into the Lunala Ooh. and it's not enough for the knockout. Sacred Sword will get it, but this is so close and there's something on that Rillaboom that is giving me uh, some real tricky thoughts about how this one plays out. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, Lunala just has to go for it, though. The Moon Geist Beam into the Rillaboom. It's still Ooh, going it's to enough. do a ton of damage, but it does hang on. Now we get a little bit of Grassy Terrain healing up, but we still have that Incineroar in the back. But because of the Grassy Terrain healing, this... You, we might not see like a fake out knockout or something if this Incineroar comes back in. James just has the speed advantage, right? He just has the speed advantage to be able to deal with the Lunala. And that is the only offensive threat left on Guillermo's side of the field. Yes, the Incineroar came back in. That's really cool. We really like that. But it's an Intimidate that doesn't matter at this point. When your opponent's Pokemon are that low, you don't need the maximum amount of damage. That Rillaboom uh, did way too much damage. I'll be quite frank about that. The Grassy Terrain, of course, gives it a boost. But Lunala should be able to take them better than that and Guillermo is going to be scrambling I think between games one and two to figure out and confirm with himself what item it is. I love the Incineroar uh, trying to maybe try wiggle in a little bit of room as Rillaboom goes into the Protect. Let's see where the Zashian goes with it. There, there's the Sacred Sword. Yep. Yeah, so of course that Sacred Sword going to drop this Incineroar on Guillermo's side, leaving Guillermo with just the Lunala. But at such low HP and seeing that that Grassy Glide is still available as a priority move from the Rillaboom, this should clean up game number one for James. It's definitely going to clean it up. As soon as he lands an attack into that Lunala, it's game over. There's no way for Guillermo to fight this one back with no spread attack in particular on something like the Lunala. I think, honestly, one thing he may have had to look at was present Serving that ground on a little bit. That was a very big factor. But James Beck in this top four set, giving up 1-0. He's so close now. Just one game needed. Honestly, it was a very close game, though. And I think yeah. Guillermo is going to have the adjustments that he needs. I think the onus really is on Guillermo to make that adaptation and be able to see if he can pull this one back. No change in the lead, though, from either trainer. Nope, it's just going to be a complete run back here. And so we'll see everything once again. The rain and then into this sun and then we'll get the psychic terrain and also the psychic seed you'll see it all happen here yeah there's a lot of uh, kind of turn zero animations to get through as indeed he sets itself up with the psychic surge and of course reactivates the psychic seed uh, making sure it's got a defensive boost the double spread still feels like a solid option i do really like the electro web and if the electro web hits you know you can capitalize on it but the damage just wasn't there it wasn't going down on the kyogre because the indeed he drew it away uh, there's certainly some concerns for me on you know how much time do you have to waste on this Indeedee, because if you're wasting time on Indeedee, then the Kyogre is just able to maybe reset up the rain with a max geyser and cause a lot of problems that way. Wow, we're gonna see the Dynamax first mm -hmm. on Guillermo's side this time around. Yeah, that means it's uh, you know it's either gonna be the Regieleki or 
the Kyoga over on James's side has not decided to Dynamax. We do know that it's faster, so he's no Dynamax on James's side of the field, maybe keeping it for something a little bit different a little bit later. Maybe something like that Rillaboom, which actually did a really good job late in the game as Kyoga just protects itself, which definitely indicates there's going to be something a little bit different from Indeedee. Well, that's a big mm. adjustment here. This is, you know, this double protect from James really is going to, you know, just cycle through one turn of this Dynamax from this Groudon and negate it completely. I mean, you still get the ability to get some damage into one of the Protects because Protect doesn't protect you from all of the damage from a Dynamax move, and you're still looking at those special defense boosts from before, but no longer uh, the Electro Web. The Electro Web here would be, uh, you know, really, really helpful, making sure you can outspeed the Kyogre again and land what would be a second Max Quake, getting your special defense up another stage, whatever the Kyogre decides to throw at you, be it uh, something like an Ice Beam or a Max Hailstorm, you would definitely be able to take that very, very comfortably after two special defense boosts. So I do like this aggressive game plan from Guillermo, knowing what he picked last time was right, and James kind of taking his foot off the gas a little bit here. That's the advantage you have when you're up one game to zero. You're able to have a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to maybe Maybe making an adaptation, maybe trying something a little bit new. Obviously, this Kyogre definitely looking to, to cause some problems here. And the Kyogre as well in the last game, you know, don't get me wrong, it did a lot of work, but don't forget it got critical hit by the Electro Web. I think the Kyogre looks even more confident without that Electro Web uh, critical hit landing on it. No, you still have taken a bit of damage there coming in from the Max Quake through mm -hmm. the Protect, but you they do look way better this time around. I mean, Ndidi gonna go for the classic follow me here, try to redirect away an attack as the Electro Web still going to connect onto both Pokemon, bringing to that Kyogre to about half, dropping the speed once again. And we saw that that was enough to allow this Groudon to move next in that first game. So this Max Quake going to fire off before this Kyogre gets a chance to. And then it follows up into the Ndidi. Whoa, that it survives this time. Yeah, doesn't get knocked out. That is definitely uh, a big concern. At the end of the day, you still have Electro Web for the following turn, and you'll be able to do a lot. Kyogre does land the Max Hailstorm, and it goes over towards the Regieleki. Of course, the numbers are going to be really, really important here as the Hail Chip is coming through. Uh, but that Max Hailstorm, after, don't forget, this time, two special defense boosts means things aren't as treacherous for this Regieleki. It's not going to knock itself out by launching a single attack. It's only losing, losing nine per turn. So an Electro Web, uh, you know, would be needed. Indeed, of course, taken out by the Hail so that's not even relevant and this Kyogre is certainly struggling to lay the damage down the last turn of Dynamax right here means Groudon's got its special defense boost probably wants to stay in it and try and capitalize on them of course Rillaboom is a little bit concerning Rillaboom a physical attacker in this instance uh, certainly something a little bit different but you know if you want to try and maybe just take out the Kyogre here if you can give that a little bit of attention then you can just start focusing on the Rillaboom Rillaboom is certainly scary when you know you have that grassy terrain that just got set, the grassy glides that have been able to do so much damage, but that Regieleki still super, super pesky. I mean, it's it's just tough when you look at this and knowing that the Kyogre wasn't even close to getting the knockout this time. Oh, nowhere near. And, uh, you know, going into the Regieleki again, taking away that weather, a really big deal. The Regieleki actually leaving the field this time for the Incineroar, so a lot of respect being put down onto that Rillaboom. Doesn't wait for the Zashian partner to come in as well. Definitely wants to buy some time, and there is a big, uh, you know, difference once that Intimidate lands. Kyogre going for the Max Guard. That does mean that Groudon is going for an attack, as it does get caught by a, a pretty sizable grassy glide, but that Intimidate has helped out as, yeah, Max Quake goes into the Max Guard, uh, being a little bit greedy there, uh, and not catching that Rillaboom on a turn where it's free to be attacked. Maybe the slight momentum swing that James needs to capitalize on his final turn of Dynamax. Well, I mean, there aren't too many ways I think that Guillermo's particular Groudon is able to hit the Rillaboom for good amounts of damage and you yes you are still looking at it as being a pretty big threat to the team but one really important thing here is that Guillermo did Dynamax first in one turn before James so James still has a turn of Dynamax to work with here now that Groudon's is over yeah, there's definitely uh, it's a room to try and capitalize on it and maybe a, a potential switch around uh, could be the play here I do like actually keeping the the Regieleki to, to try and you know maybe pick off this Kyogre a little bit later when it's been dealt with, uh, you know, or bought very, very low. But my big concern is Regieleki really doesn't get to play the game until Rillaboom is gone. Of course, the Rillaboom is going to be a, a real troublemaker, uh, and that's certainly going to cause some problems. Groudon, though, just going for it with the Precipice Blade. It's nowhere near a knockout on the Kyogre or the Rillaboom. Nope, but the Max Geyser, too. 
Kyogre's last turn of Dynamax will be used here to reset the weather, but also Ooh. get a one-hit knockout into Guillermo's Incineroar. And so you now have that Intimidate off of the field. Yes, you had to deal with a fake out this turn, but if you have something like the Zashi in the back and maybe you can pivot around your Pokemon, then all of a sudden this Rillaboom does not have an Intimidate drop on it anymore. No, the Rillaboom is able to pivot around too. I think when you've got the Pokemon advantage like that, you're, you're feeling pretty good about your chances being able to, to get that out. I mean, they're both at three to three, so they have one option to show off. I imagine it would be the Zashian once again for James Beck. It was so impactful in the last one. And I like this. I like the L Lunala coming in to, to maybe buy a little bit of time until that Rillaboom is off the field. But realistically, the answers to Rillaboom are very few and far between here. It's been chunked out a little bit. It is, of course, recovering a little bit with the grassy terrain, but there's nothing that's hitting it super effectively right now. That Groudon hasn't shown off a single fire move, so there's no choice for something like the Max Flare, uh, or in this case, you know, the Heat Crash. And this Groudon, oh, Ooh. getting bought so low. Lunala following up with a Meteor Beam does want that special attack boost. Yes, it absolutely does, but it also wants to potentially secure a knockout here and make this just a touch easier for Guillermo to take a Pokemon advantage. So here comes the Meteor Beam. It will connect, and it is going to go right into the Rillaboom, and it's oh. still going to survive here, but we still have oh, to see wait. what the Groudon's going to do, and that will be a double connect from Guillermo. Both the Kyogre and the Rillaboom will be knocked out, and now James in the second game of this Masters Top 4 set is down to his final Pokemon and Guillermo's on the verge of being able to bring us to a game three. Those little bits of recovery from the grassy terrain have held on, allowed Pokemon to stay on the field just a little bit longer than you would expect. Honestly, the grassy terrain recovery was what saved the ground on there. The amount that he gets back is, uh, you know, less or is more than the amount he had remaining. That is absolutely incredible. He recovers uh, just enough to be able to take that grassy glide and those grassy glides are doing so much damage being able to take that really really big the speed drop from earlier coming in clutch as we're going to game three here in top four at the world championships but back <laughs> to the game we're going into game three there is going to be no adjustment from guillermo on the lead but as we pivot to the other side you may have seen already that rillaboom is ready to go from the get-go, so the Indeedee being left behind, and honestly, Guillermo's probably pretty okay with that. That's something that's been slowing him down a little bit, but this Rillaboom is the big damage factor. It's been doing so much to this Groudon, so why not get that damage done early? Yeah, I look at it that way, but I also look at the fact that Ndidi, while it was able to take away the attention from the Kyogre for one turn, it wasn't really able to do much more than that. It did allow for a survival. We saw the double protect in that game too, to just be able to get rid of one turn of Dynamax. But then after that, and in game one, it got knocked out pretty early. So I love the adjustment of the Rillaboom to just start trying to dish out some damage. And the Groudon does not want to deal with any of it right now. This Groudon has been getting absolutely hurt by some of these uh, grassy glides. It's been causing so many problems, and I think this Rillaboom does have to be intimidated for it to be anywhere near manageable. That is an actual sort of fact that we have to agree with. And Reggie Alecki going for the Protect, just trying to scout out maybe an opposing <laughs> Protect. He's caught the Protect on the opposing Kyogre, which means he might be able to hit it next turn. As I Rillaboom, oh. high horsepowers, not going for that grassy glide, so respecting the Groudon might leave in exchange for the Incineroar, trying to capitalize there. That's a good bit of information for Guillermo to use and maybe look at into the next turn. I mean, these protects were just kind of maybe led to a little bit of a mute turn when you just look at it from that perspective, but oh, it did allow Guillermo to pivot, and we are seeing a Dynamax now coming out from his side, and I have to bet that it is going to be that Reggie Alecki. It's looking at two very nice targets on the other side, mm -hmm. especially when you look at that super effective damage into the Kyogre, but what else does this Reggie Alecki have up its sleeve? Uh, that's really the big question here. I've got a feeling we're going to be matching it with a Dynamax. Dynamax on the other side as well. Both trainers know that if you're getting hit by a max move, you need more health to be able to take them. The pivot in of that Incineroar may slow down this Rillaboom for a turn. I think Guillermo's targeting of the fake out from Incineroar is absolutely huge here, but Kyogre being able to kind of mess around with the weather or just put down big damage is going to be huge here. Uh, Regilecki just going for it with the max lightning. There's no fake out on this turn, bear in mind. Whoa! That is a monstrous knockout on the Kyogre. That's just a one-hit knockout. 
Uh, there is no need. That's the life orb. Life orb transistor being able to land that Max Lightning and really importantly, potentially for later, you know, the, the Rillaboom doesn't have grassy terrain right now. The Regieleki does lose a bit of health, but Rillaboom's still high horsepower in. Yeah, but look at that. The survival there of the Regieleki, despite it being super effective damage and the parting shot as well from this Incineroar just to be able to pivot out. But James has lost such a huge offensive threat on his team and that critical tool of that Dynamax. It's a zero turn Dynamax. It's one of the worst things that can happen to you in the game. And this Rillaboom being stuck in right now, it wants to keep high horsepowering this Regieleki. It's been doing good damage to it. And obviously, you know now what that Rillaboom is packing as an item. That's something that Guillermo has been very respectful of and knowing that that's an option on the Rillaboom, Dynamaxing the Regieleki so he can take it. But this is a problem for James, in a lot of instances when you see just how impactful and how much damage some of these Regieleki are able to dish out, well, Electric Terrain is now also mm -hmm. on the field. So you're looking at Transistor, Electric Terrain, and that Life Orb. And if that's going to go in the way of that Zacian and James isn't careful, that could be another one-hit knockout. Well, the Rillaboom can't Grassy Glide right now for a number of reasons. But that just means that, you know what, you're able to throw out some big attacks with this Regieleki just going first every time. It's Calling just it Though. He's just going for it into this Rillaboom. Uh, the Rillaboom getting... That's that's not very effective. Look how much damage it did. That's exactly the power of all of these different pieces coming together. Oh, he's and got because it. of the speed of the Lunala as well, Zacian not moving next. That Moonguys Beam will clean up this Rillaboom. And James down to his final two Pokemon and Guillermo. You can see the emotion in his face on that camera. He can taste the victory and taste that top cut. And Didi too. Well, Gonna be coming to the field, but is this redirection gonna be enough for the Sashian to get through the four Pokemon that Guillermo still has left. When you're in a 4v2 Pokemon count, you definitely want two offensive threats when you're the two, and this Indeedy is gonna be able to buy a little bit of time. How much time is it gonna be enough? I'm just not sure. There's so much work for this Zashian to do. The Zashian also could kind of get pinned out by the Incineroar. The Incineroar being able to come back in at some point intimidate it, land a fake out on it if it doesn't protect. There's so much to do. Of course, the Ndidi can do more than redirection. There's certainly options. And if this Zashin can target correctly with the help of a helping hand, that's going to be a huge assistance. There is a world, let's not rule it out, where Ndidi goes for those expanding forces and starts to contribute to the fight. But the big thing here is the, you know, the Regieleki is just going to be moving first. Okay, well, we're seeing the helping hand from the Ndidi trying to boost up this damage from the Zashi and the Max Lightning without the electric terrain going into the Zashi and it's just a knockout here. <laughs> That's going to remove the Zashi and one of the biggest and last offensive threats from James's field right off and now Lunala gets to follow that up and it's just a free and DD on the field right now and so that Meteor Beam with that Power Herb this could do it. Oh yeah, the Meteor Beam is definitely going to be a big amount of damage. There was of course the boost from the, uh, the Psychic Seed uh, uh, that may help out a little bit, uh, but I just think Lunala should be able to take out an Indeedee as Guillermo Castilla Diaz knows exactly where this one is going. It's not enough for the knockout, but you know what? He's still got four Pokemon, and Indeedee needs to now hit uh, a perfect expanding force every time double knockout, and it's not even faster than the Regieleki. And it can't even double target both Pokemon either, yeah. because with that Max Lightning, Regieleki change that terrain back to an electric type and so Guillermo he can feel it the rising voltage from the Regieleki into this Indeedee will secure the knockout and Guillermo Castilla Diaz will make it to the finals of the world championships tomorrow it's gonna be all European the first time we hold worlds in Europe we managed to get, of course, one of the finest finals you could ask for. These players have been going crazy all weekend. And look at the celebrations. He is over the moon with this one. That is a phenomenal performance. The adaptation in game three is so, 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 so good.